been proven in Minnesota that a strong artistic community has a positive and measurable impact on the state's economy. And certainly Minnesota has an incredibly rich and healthy environment for the arts that fosters broad public participation in and support for the many different creative disciplines. An important example of this is the thriving existence of the Northern Clay Center, founded 20 years ago by a potter, Peter Leach. Early on, Emily Galusha joined the board of directors and a few short years later, in 1994, became the director. Since then, Emily has overseen the Clay Center growing from a small regional organization to a center of international influence for all aspects of the ceramic arts, exhibitions, education, and artist services. Emily, a longtime foundation and arts administrator for numerous arts and human service organizations, has a BA cum laude from Harvard and an MBA from the University of Minnesota. She designed and ran for the first five years the Bush Artist Fellows Program. Of a note, Emily designed and manages the Regis Masters Series, which gives an honorarium, exhibition, and opportunity to lecture to senior artists who have had a major impact on modern ceramics. This led to a book, Clay Talks, Stories of Life and Work by the First 13 Regis Masters, edited from their lectures by Ms. Galusha. All art is functional. Not all art is utilitarian, but all art is functional. And part of that function can be communicating an idea to make people think and to make people conscious of different ideas of beauty and ugliness and you know how those two ideas kind of come together. A number of potters have commented on this, that when you use a pot you really like um, and are very conscious of, you're using basically something formed by the hands of some other human being, not a machine, and made with intention so that there can be a kind of connection between you and the person who actually made that pot. I also have this theory that pots and potters start to look alike, and that once a potter has developed a really clear and, and kind of consistent vocabulary of forms and finishes and ideas that he or she is trying to show that there's a way in which those pots become like that potter. I mean, I think Warren, for example, and his pots are completely consistent. No nonsense clarity about both the potter and the pots. So they're accessible. And they're accessible, and they're a little, sometimes a little rough on the bottom. I mean, not, but you know, Warren can be a little rough. He doesn't spend a lot of time smoothing his pots. He doesn't spend a lot of time smoothing his message. We have pots in the sales gallery of Josh DeWeese, who ran the Archie Bray Foundation for a long time. They absolutely are like his pots. They're kind of loose, generous. You can't escape the work you make being completely contextualized in who you are. Did you go through this area? It's a great space. And we can break it up with walls. And so we can, you know, really accommodate a lot of different artists' ideas. 
in this space, which is nice. There are three major components to the Clay Center that are, in our view, equal in importance. And so the metaphor has been the three-legged stool. The three legs are exhibition, education, and artist services. You know, and occasionally someone will say, well, okay, so times are tight. What if you had to eliminate one of those? You can't. I mean, if you eliminate one of the legs, the stool falls over. Ultimately, the purpose of all of it is education in the largest possible sense. I mean, it's, it's teaching people how to look at their environment, at objects in the environment, in a more careful and thoughtful and challenging way. Whether they're making the stuff in back, whether they're learning about it and making it in the classroom, or whether they're simply looking at it in the exhibition space. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility to help people either understand the mechanics of what they're doing and they're learning about in the classes, or to understand the context from which the artists are making work. Everybody who creates something I don't think is an artist. What is the definition of a professional artist? And where do we, if we want to engage people, do we have to show the results of the work? It actually raises a lot of interesting questions for an organization like the Clay Center. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of people who are taking classes are really dedicated amateurs. And there was a whole discussion at this panel about the word amateur. Uh, and one of the other participants and I were advocating the use of the word, that it's a great word, because it means doing something for the love of it. Literally, it is for the love, amateur. At, at what point do you say, well, intention counts? And that, you know, someone like Edith Garcia, Mark, Michael Lucero, or Arthur Gonzalez are intending somehow to have a wider communication and trying to make a living from it. And that's different from um, someone who makes a living as a lawyer but has this deep love for doing something for its own sake. Um, do we show both of them? I don't know. It's kind of a, something we have to think about. Yeah. I heard some executive describe his um, career path. It was, he always tried to live at the edge of his own ignorance. And, and actually, that's what I've tried to do, too. I, I always try to stay at the edge of my own ignorance. There's always the risk of failure, but you're always learning something at the same time. And, and because you're learning it, you're, you're approaching with a fresh perspective. And so the possibilities of coming up with something interesting, because you are sort of fresh and new to it, are much better than if you're doing a rote kind of same old, same old, same old, same old. We, we do a lot of work with children, and we have clay camps in the summer. And I mean, some of the stuff that kids make, it's just fabulous. I mean, it, it's so uninhibited by any sense of what's correct. I mean, it just, they just make it. There's a wonderful quotation from a writer named Guy Davenport um, it's a def it's, I have found the most compelling definition of art. Art is the replacement of indifference with attention. You know, this um, replaces indifference to kind of color and form and weird found objects with attention to what happens when you put those together. I just think it's a really interesting definition.